Good morning. Welcome to God Time, the story of us. Today, we are going to look at the new covenant that Jesus brings. We've been studying through the Old Testament, and we studied hard that covenant, right, that was needed because of God and his creation created man to have this wonderful relationship with himself, and he loves man and desires man, but man separated that and chose to say no to God and rebel against God, and as we've studied over and over again, you know, sin cannot remain in the presence of God, and we have went through, and now we are on story uh, number 19 in this 21-story series that tells the story of the Bible. If you've missed any of them, just go back. They are all in order under God time. Uh, you can go to YouTube and just uh, go to the First Southern Baptist Church uh, FSBC Space Topeka YouTube page, and you'll find them all right there. Let's begin. Today's story of the New Covenant is from Matthew 26, from Mark 14, um, also that's from uh, Luke 22, John 13 through 17. Now, I want us to uh, look at the story. It's not in several scenes this time. It's just one. So let's do it. Jesus had been with his disciples uh, three, three and a half years. And Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. The Pharisees and other Jewish leaders were becoming increasingly upset with Jesus uh, and, and over his claims that he was the Son of God, is the Son of God. And they looked for ways to trap Jesus into saying something they could arrest him for. But Jesus was just too wise for them. Many of Jesus' stories pointed out the hypocrisy of the Jewish leaders. And he said, when the Pharisees and teachers share with you God's commands, Listen to them, but don't follow their example. They don't live out what they teach. The high priest met with these leaders to discuss capturing Jesus and putting him to death. We can't arrest him during Passover, they agreed, or it will create a huge riot. That week, Jesus and his 12 disciples met together in a home to celebrate Passover. Before the meal began, Jesus got up from a table, tied a towel around his waist, and poured some water into a bowl. Then he went to each of his disciples and washed his feet, wiping them with the towel he had around him. This shocked the disciples. Only hired servants are supposed to wash guests' feet. They wondered, well, why is Jesus doing this? But after washing their feet, Jesus sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? Since I've washed your feet... You ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. During the meal, Jesus picked up some bread, thanked God for it, and broke it into pieces, giving it to his disciples. He said, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine and thanked God for it. He gave them the cup and said, all of you drink this. It is my blood given for you, a new covenant between God and his people. It is poured out to forgive the sins of many. Remember me each time you eat and drink these things together. When you see what happens tonight, you'll abandon me. It's part of God's plan that I'll be betrayed and died. But don't fear, I will rise again from the dead. Jesus knew that his disciple Judas would soon betray him, bringing Jewish soldiers to capture him later that night when no one was around. Jesus continued to speak to them, saying, Now I am giving you a new commandment. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. The greatest love is shown when people lay down their lives for each other. You can't do this on your own. You must remain in my love and obey what I've taught you. If you remain in me, I will remain in you. Like branches connected to a vine, if you remain in me, 
you will produce much fruit, and this much fruit will bring great joy to you and especially to God our Father. Then Jesus said, I'll be leaving you soon, but God will send his Spirit who will never leave you and who will guide you in all the ways of truth. And after the Passover meal, when it was dark, Jesus and his disciples went to an olive grove to pray. That's the end of our story today. But let's, let's, let's review and look at a few questions, all right? Why was Jesus going to Jerusalem? Well, if you remember, he was going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. What do we know about this celebration? It went all the way back to the days of Moses when he told Pharaoh to let my people go, when the death angel would go throughout and anybody that had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost, the death angel would pass over. Anybody who didn't have that, the firstborn son would be taken. Do you think that it's interesting that Jesus going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast as the firstborn of the heavenly father and as the lamb who would be slain? Hmm. I don't think that's coincidence. And then the second question, why did the Jewish leaders want to kill Jesus? Well, because of his claims. First off, he embarrassed them, right? People in leadership often think much too much of themselves. And uh, Jesus pointed that out. He pointed out their hypocrisy. But then what he did is he took it another step. He took it another step. He told them that I am the Son of God. Wow. And he's proven that the Son of Man had power, as we studied in our story, whenever he did the miracles and made the lame man to walk, he says, to prove to you that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins, I say, rise, take up your bed and walk, and he did. Well, what did Jesus do right before the Passover meal began? You remember that? He wraps a towel around his waist, something that never would be done by the guest of honor or by the person who was a leader. And he would kneel down and put himself in a role of a servant and wash the feet of all of his disciples. Now, they protested. But he said, no, I've got to do this. Now, why did he do that? To give them an example. He said, just as I have washed your feet, you should be washing each other's feet as well. You know, Jesus said whenever he had that Passover meal there, he took the bread and he said, take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he said, it is my blood given for you. A new covenant between God and his people. If there's a new covenant. What does that mean? It means this is the new symbol of the covenant. No, long, no longer do you take your lamb to the temple to sacrifice it for your sins. This bread is going to symbolize. It doesn't become the body of Jesus, and the wine doesn't become the blood of Jesus like our Catholic brothers think. But instead, they are. Uh, it's a symbol of the body that Jesus had that was broken for us. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. And the blood that was given, the Bible also says, without the Without the uh, remission, without the spilling of blood, there is no remission of sins. So, do you remember? What was the covenant God made with Abraham and his people? And, and what did it require? Well, he told them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a blessing to all the nations of the earth. And all of the people of all of the world are going to be blessed through you. He was talking about the coming of Jesus. Now, what did it require? The old covenant required this sacrificial system so that all these sacrifices would take place. The new covenant, there isn't all these sacrifices. There was only one. And the new covenant means that Jesus came so that no more covenants would ever have to be made. So... That brings us to what is God's new covenant. What well, we said it two stories ago, as we quoted John 3.16, that God so loved the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, if anyone, you, believes in him, he will not perish, but he'll have everlasting eternal life. That's the covenant. That your life will be full of life. Jesus himself said the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. We've seen that in the story all throughout the Old Testament. We saw it in the fall. We saw it in Cain killing Abel. We saw it in people getting full of themselves and, and leading to the flood. We saw it in the Tower of Babel. We saw it as people continually failed and rebelled against God. I've seen it in my own life as I have, I have failed God. But Jesus said, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come so that you might have life and so that your life might be full of life. The new covenant, the apostle Paul said, if anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things pass away and look, everything is becoming brand new. Well, and then Jesus gives a new commandment to his disciples Boy, it's a commandment that we really need right now. Remember what that new commandment was in the story? A new command I give to you, that you love one another. Even as I have loved you, by this all people will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. How are they supposed to do that? By serving one another. By caring for one another. Jesus went on to tell them how they should act toward one another. And that, my friends, is the reason why whenever we live out the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are salt. Not that we, not that we season life, but we're that which keeps this world from rotting. And right now, if you turn on the news, there's a lot of rotting. There's the rotting, putrid smell of hatred. Not for Christians. We don't have that luxury. Today I'm going to be praying for you that you live out this new command of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are joining right now. Father, I love them. But Father, I know you love them so much. And you don't only love them, you want to love through them today. So help them to do that. Help them to live out these teachings of Jesus Christ as they go to work, as they go about their daily lives, as they interact with their neighbors, as they interact with the clerks in the store. And Father, may they see the way they love and may they recognize, Lord, that Jesus is evident in their lives. It's in his name that I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me today. Love God, love one another, and please go be salt and light.